Peace, peace, this your host, Sila Shalom, and this is the Cosmon teachings in the words of Jehovah and his angel ambassadors from the Cosmon Bible of Waspi. And the topic of discussion today is called, The East Indian Company Was Inspired by Luamung, the False Christ. Now, a quick Wikipedia about the East Indian Company states, London merchants presented a petition to Queen Elizabeth I for permission to sail to the Indian Ocean. The permission was granted, and on the 10th of April, 1591, this time they succeeded. And on the 31st of December, 1600, the Queen granted a royal charter to George Earl of Cumberland and 215 knights and burgesses under the name Governor and Company of Merchants of London trading with East Indians. For a period of 15 years the charter awarded the newly formed company a monopoly on trade with all countries east of the Cape of Good Hope and west of the Saints of Magdalene. Sir James Lancaster commanded the first East Indian Company voyage in 1601. And in March 1604, Sir Henry Middleton commanded the second voyage. So here you could see it was Queen Elizabeth I that gave the permission or the go for this to occur. Now, the inspiration for this whole thing was inspired by Lou among the false Christ. So that means Queen Elizabeth I, Sir James Lancaster, and and Sir Henry Middleton were all under the inspiration of Luamung and his host of angels. As stated in the book of East, Daughter of Jehovah, chapter 14, verses 5 through 14, where it states, verse 5, And yet, on the other hand, Luamung, the false Christ, had taken advantage of all the other three false gods. He had found mortal emissaries in Britain, Western Europe whom he had inspired under the name East India Company. The uh, poppy miscant is the sole source of opium. The Honorable East India Company forces Indian farmers to grow them. Opium? Indeed. Most of it is bought up by the company at prices fixed by them and then shipped to China to help turn an entire nation into opium addicts. But why? It's the only thing that we can sell the Chinese in return for the tea and silks that we Europeans have become so addicted to. I think, Gordon, the ladies ought to be spared this lecture. But the Chinese emperor resists. He no longer wants to trade in opium. So, the company decides to wage a war against him. And in this war, it wants Indian sepoys to fight and die. The circle is complete. And we call it the free market. To these he had said, come, and I will lead you where there is great wealth and most luxurious enjoyment. Behold, ye shall possess the place and overcome the heathen of the rich city. So here you can see it was Luamung that gave them this inspiration and this idea to go east into India. Verse 6. So Luamung led them, and they took with them missionaries and Bibles and swords and cannons and warships, and when they arrived in India, Luamung, through his angel hosts, said unto them, Tell these heathens, ye are worshippers of the Lamb of Peace, that ye have come in love, and for righteousness' sake, and behold. And it shall come to pass, when ye are once within, ye shall fall upon them, and destroy them by the million men, women, and children, and ye shall fall upon their aqueducts, which irrigate the lands, and ye shall destroy them also. And behold, millions of these heathen shall starve every year because of the famine that shall surely come upon them.
So here you can see again that it was Lou Among that was the driving cause or inspiration behind this whole event of the East Indian Company. Verse 7. Now all these came to pass. The idlers, the adulterers of Luamung did fall upon the Buddhist earthly possessions and did possess the land of India. And in the name of Christ and the Holy Ghost did kill seven million men, women, and children. Verse 8. And they also destroyed the aqueducts whereby famine came upon the Indians so that in course of time 30 millions more perished of starvation. Verse 9. Now, although Kabbalichthys, the false god, thus lost in a great measure his earthly possession, he still maintained the heavens of India, so that Lu among the false Christ really gained but few souls in heaven after all this destruction. So like I said again, the purpose of the angels is to win spirits. So Lu among used the Britain, the East Indian Company, to invade India and to possess the land and to take the, to take the resources. Now, here's how Lu among invaded China. Verse 10, Lu among the false Christ had also led his moral emissaries into China and hoped to possess that country also. He had said to them, go hither and enforce upon them the opium trade. The uh, poppy miscant is the sole source of opium. The Honorable East India Company forces Indian farmers to grow them. Opium? Indeed. Most of it is bought up by the company at prices fixed by them and then shipped to China to help turn an entire nation into opium addicts. But why? It's the only thing that we can sell the Chinese in return for the tea and silks that we Europeans have become so addicted to. And this shall come to pass that they will become a drunken and worthless people and ye shall fall upon them, and overcome them, and possess all their country, wherein there are stored great riches. Verse 11. And the adulterers of the false Christ did fall upon the Chinese, and enforced the opium trade, and did also make many of them a drunken and worthless people. And after they were thus drunk, the adulterers of the false Christ raised the cry, Behold, the drunken heathen, the indulgers in opium. Verse 12, Nevertheless, the Confucians of China were a mighty power, and they baffled Lu among emissaries in all further encroachment. Now, here's how Lu among invades the native Indians. Verse 13, Now, although Lu among the false Christ had been beaten by the wisdom of God, true God that is, in possessing the colonies of Guatama, meaning America, warriors to accomplish the destruction of the Algonquin tribes that inhabited the country, meaning the Native Americans. Verse 14, and this also came to pass. The adulterers of Luamung did fall upon the Algonquins, or Native Americans, and caused three million of them to be put to death, men, women, and children. So hey, you could see that this inspiration of the East Indian Company was inspired by Lu among the false Christ and his host of angels. And when the Europeans came to the Indians, the Chinese, and the Native Americans, they came with the Bibles and they came with the cross. So Lu among the false Christ is responsible for this whole event. So Owaspi is rendering up this information, which you will never find in your Bible, showing you how mortals are chess pieces in the hands of angels. See that? And with that, I'd like to say peace and blessings and catch you on the next documentary. Shalom.